folks, I'm Robert McCarthy and this is Mule Fitness. Thank you for buying my book if you bought it. And if you didn't, it doesn't matter. We have Julie here and today she's going to help us with the kettlebell routine. And the kettlebell routine is on page uh, 162 of the book and uh, it's in this nice green part of the routine and we're wearing green. So I hope you appreciate that. Uh, keep everything nice and tight, how we use the book. So we go down the first column, second column, third column, top to bottom. Thumbnails are on this side, but we're going to show you the video of kettlebell. Uh, why do we like kettlebell so much? Uh, it's a great way to get the shoulders warmed up, produce power out of the hips, and have a very efficient biomechanics, lifting biomechanics. So that's what kettlebell is all about, and we're going to try to show you the most efficient way to do that. So I just said the word biomechanical efficiency. What in the heck is that boy talking about? Let me try to explain. So here I have a weight, and I want to try to get this weight up in a vertical fashion up to my chin in a straight line. And when I do that, if I do my mechanics right, the weight goes up in a straight line. Let me demonstrate from the side. See if that weight doesn't come up in a pretty much straight line as opposed to this, where the weight swings out and swings out, or swings out, or swings out. So in kettlebell, we want to be as efficient as possible and get the weight up with the least amount of energy possible in the most efficient manner possible. There's two ways to swing a kettlebell. One where you muscle a thing and it's flying all over the place and hitting the back of your wrist. And the other way, which is elegant, we just kind of zip the kettlebell up, and we're going to discuss this in our lift patterns later. This is our first kettlebell warm-up, and inherent in the routine, the kettlebell routine, is a warm-up, and we've got cardio built into it, and we've got um, warming up the body and activating the body and the fascial networks, etc. Everything is contained in the one page of the workout, which it should take about an hour to do. Uh, the first one is uh, shoulder rotation, so we're going to pick up our kettlebell, and the idea is we're just going to work and warm up the uh, shoulder joint. It's called the glenohumeral joint. Uh, it's a real shallow ball and socket joint, so I can go ahead and just turn it back and forth, clockwise, counterclockwise, the natural springy point of my body, and then I can open up and put it to the back of my body and do the same thing. And I have a whole different feel on that shoulder joint. So we're going to watch Julie do it now. And uh, the rotator cuff muscles that try to dynamically stabilize this little shallow ball and socket joint in here kind of grab like these four claws, boom, right around there. And you can feel them work. And then go to the front of your body again, Julie. And now to the back. And again, she's really opening up that chest, and it's a whole different dynamic on the shoulder. So that's a great way to deeply warm up that shoulder joint and prepare it for movement. So this is our second exercise it's called Around the Body Pass, and it's working further with the warm up of the shoulder joint. And I'll demonstrate. So pretend like we have an oval going around our body, and I'm just going to pass the kettlebell as I get a rhythmic swing with my weight shift. Weight shift is always good in sports. Let's practice it right off the bat. And then I'm going to stop it and go around the other direction. And it's like an internal rotation, a bigger, deeper warm-up of that shoulder after our first exercise. And we're going to have Julie do it now. And she's going to do a couple passes on the front. 
And notice how her left arm is going into kind of internal rotation. And I'll have her stop. And we'll turn around to the back. And now we're going to go the other way now. Whoops. Sorry. The other direction. Here we go. And now we see her right shoulder kind of go into a little bit of internal rotation and stretch of those anterior fibers of the shoulder. And again, she has that nice rhythmic swing as she's getting facile with uh, handling that kettlebell. Very good. Ribbon halo. All right, we've already warmed the shoulder up and then we did a round the body pass, working deeper into those nice fibers, anterior, posterior fibers of the shoulder. And now we're gonna do the ribbon halo, which is a big 360 movement uh, of our shoulder joints. And our scaps are moving. We're gonna use a lighter kettlebell. And you know those ribbons, like bring the troops home? They kind of go up and around and back on itself. Well, that's what we're gonna do. And I'm gonna start from my hip and I'm gonna go up and around the back of my head, not over the top. And I really open up my shoulders that way and my chest muscles and a lot of stuff is working. And I go back the other way and I kind of put a little rhythm as I shift weight and the kettlebell goes around the back of my head to my hip, around the back of my head, and to my hip, and you get the idea. Now let's watch Miss Julie do it. Okay. All right, so again, it's gonna start from her hip, around the back of her head. I like to say like this is the earth, her head's the earth, and the kettlebell's the moon going around the back side. And then notice she has a nice little kind of rhythmic flow to that. And we'll do maybe two more, one, And now let's maybe go to the side so we can see it from the side angle here. And again, you can see how it goes around the back of her head. And you should be able to see a lot of the lat muscles, the pec muscles, and all the deltoids, and all that stuff working that shoulder joint. And the scaps are moving and doing their jobs, and it looks good. Okay, that's Ribbon Halo. Figure eight pulsing squat. So now we need to warm up the lower body and get the legs going and get the glutes going and all the hamstrings and all that good stuff. So I'm gonna demonstrate first, uh, notice how we're using kind of lighter kettlebells here. All during the warm up, don't go crazy on the weight. Uh, keep it kind of light, all right? And what I'm gonna do is I'm, this is called the bat cave. Bats can fly in, bats can fly out. So we're gonna call this the bat cave. And so the kettlebell is gonna go in the bat cave from the front and I'm gonna stand up as I pass it in a figure eight pattern. Then I'm gonna go through the back of the bat cave. Here's the back, whoop, the bat's coming out. Through the back, it's coming out. And I'm pulsing and kind of standing with each pass. Now we're gonna watch Julie do it. And it's gonna go through the front of the bat cave. And her weight is probably in her midfoot and in her ball of her foot, towards the mid front of her foot as she's going through the front of the bat cave. So we're gonna have that stop and she's gonna to turn to the side. And now you're gonna see it go through the back of the bat cave. And actually she's standing up a little bit more. As she's doing so, the weight is more in the heel and the midfoot now. So it shifts back and we load the glutes up, preferentially going through the back of the bat cave. Very good. It's the lift, hip shift, rack basics. So before we even lift a kettlebell, we need to have some basic principles going on. So number one, we want to lift the kettlebell from pretty much between our feet. And you're saying to yourself, that's not a kettlebell. And you're right, it's a weight tied to a string. But what we're going to do is we're going to go over that concept of biomechanical efficiency that we mentioned earlier. And so the idea is to pick the weight up in a straight line, as straight as possible, 
and as efficient as possible going from the floor to my shoulder. Now, I can do that by lifting the weight, shifting this hip back. See my thumb looks like a hitchhike. And then I come up and around and rack it with my close in, looks like a pigeon wing here, kind of tucked in pigeon wing. And the kettlebell will rest right here. And then I release that. So this is different than lifting the kettlebell without shifting my hip as the kettlebell goes out and away from my body, putting a torque on my arm, on my bicep, on my shoulder. I don't want that. Get rid of torque. We don't like torque if we don't have to have torque. So we want biomechanical efficiency. So it's going to go right on up is our lift, hip shift, basics. So that's the idea of uh, biomechanical efficiency. And let's just watch it one time from the side. So I'm trying to get the kettlebell up this weight as vertical with as little movement as possible, lifting it vertical as opposed to, which is wrong, lifting the thing out as it's swinging around, flopping on the back of my wrist or something terrible. So let's go ahead. I'll get rid of our prop and we're going to watch and Julie and I are going to do this together. So the kettlebell is going to start between your feet, not out in front of you, but pretty much between your feet. So we're going to bend down and we're going to kind of look ahead in a squat pattern and we're going to lift the kettlebell up in slow motion. And then as soon as we stand up, our elbows are going to go into our waist. We're going to feel our elbow in our waist as we immediately shift our hip back, hitchhike our thumb, spear our hand open in the kettlebell horn. And then I come up and around and I can scratch our whiskers up here. And then I'm going to release the kettlebell. And let's watch it from the side, all right? So we're going to stand, yeah, if you want, you can okay. stand that way. I'll be offset. So here we go. The kettlebell goes from, we're going to lift it up. Our hip is going to shift back as we hitchhike our thumb, open our hand up, and then we come up and around and rack it. And then we're going to release it, all right? So we're going to watch Julie do that again. Thumbs up, elbow comes in, thumbs out, and then the kettlebell just slides around the back of her wrist. We have these guards in case we screw up, but we shouldn't really need them. They're just going to slide around the back of her wrist. The kettlebell is not going to flop over. We don't want that. And if you see any kettlebell lifts that do that, well, you're on your own. But we're not going to do that here. We're going to do it kind of efficiently. So um, Julie's going to face me now. And I want to get the concept of this hip shift back. So if I were to try to punch her in that shoulder, and here I'm coming, but she doesn't want me to punch her, she shifts back. And then we'll do it to the other side. She shifts back. And it's really from... The hip, she shifts back more from the waist. So let's do that again. She's going to shift back from the hip as her shoulder goes along with it. She's going to shift back from the hip as her shoulder goes along with it. And now let's stand to the front and let's, and we're going to do this again because I really want to emphasize this. We're going to shift back with our left hip and then our right through center and then our right hip. And that's the idea. So you need that hip shift to get the thing up properly. Now let's talk about the squat. I'm gonna have her stand to the side again, okay? Um, so when she reaches down to get that kettlebell, and she's gonna freeze down there, notice that her shins are pretty much parallel to her back. She's got her lower back locked in, but the shin and the lower back are somewhat parallel as she stands up and she then lifts the kettlebell to rack it. So, in a vertical lift, we're from a, doing it from a squat pattern. And the squat pattern is 
tail down, head up, as we lift our kettlebell, lock in your lower back, and then, again, my shins are so, should be somewhat parallel to my back as we lift that up. So I'm hoping I've beaten that topic into the ground, because if you don't get this, you're not going to lift the kettlebell with any efficiency. Or be able to go up and wait. Or be able to go up and wait. Good point. So, yeah. so we, we do want to start lifting more heavy now, and that's where we're going. All right. This is the vertical clean. Finally, we get to lift the kettlebell. All these exercises. This is the sixth exercise in the program, and it's the uh, top exercise of column two. Um, so vertical clean. So we went through the lift basics, hip shift basics, rack basics, but now we get to actually see it in life. So here we go. So the kettlebell is somewhat um, around my toes, ball of my foot area, so my tail down, my head is up, and as I lift the kettlebell, here it is, elbow into the waist, hip shifts back, thumb hitchhikes out, my fingers spear the horn, the handle right away, and it's racked with my elbow closer to my body, and the kettlebell is just resting on the top of this wrist, and then I can release it, and I'll do that uh, again a little quicker as I lift and whoop, it kind of should just kind of spin right up into this rack position. And again, I'm lifting the kettlebell vertically as I move my body efficiently, biomechanically efficiently to get it up. All right, with the least amount of energy possible. So we're just gonna do that from the side. Again. And I'll slow it down for you. So again, lift, hip shifts back as your thumb hitchhikes out, your hand spear the handle, and I come right around. And I'll do it one time at speed. All right, now let's watch Julie do it. So she lifts. And it's right on up, and then she releases it. Lift, hip shift, she's spearing it right away. Watch how this kettlebell just sneaks around the back of her wrist really beautifully. Not a lot of flopping around, which is good. We don't want flopping around. At speed. And at speed now. And do one more. Now let's turn to the side. Again, we're just going to emphasize this. She's going to do it in slow motion for the first one. The hip shifts back. Let's do that again in slow motion. So we're going to have this hip shift back maybe a little more as that elbow goes in. Comes up and around. Good. And now she's going to do it at speed for you. There we go. That's an efficient way to lift the kettlebell. Vertical clean. All right, this is vertical clean to overhead press. Uh, I like kettlebell for strengthening the shoulders. We did a lot of warm up at the beginning and that was for a reason. We wanted to get these guys nice and warm and now we want to get them strong. So here we go. And I like lifting the kettlebell uh, one weight overhead, one arm at a time. Not two arms, one arm. Um, and why? Because when I lift that thing up, I can kind of put my body plumb with gravity right where that kettlebell started, way down there, a nice vertical pattern, and then I can give my shoulder a very favorable position to be in um, and not have it torqued out to the side or a two-arm press, which might impinge our acromium arch and all that stuff in there that you don't really care about but you feel. So we want injury prevention and uh, we don't want to create any problems for the athlete or for you the kettlebell lifter. So here we go. I'm going to do a vertical clean to overhead press. Uh, we already know how to do a vertical clean. If you don't remember, go to the last exercise. So I'm going to start from a standing position. Why? Because when I go down, I like to feel the elastic potential of my glutes and my hamstrings and all the stuff back here in that gluteal fold area. 
as I go ahead and do my vertical uh, clean and then overhead press, which is just a real muscle action as I push that thing up. Back to the rack position and release. I'm ready for my next lift. Boom, right overhead. Release, I'll do it from the side, here we go. Tail down, head up, weight between the feet, and lift, clean, and press. And I'll do it once from here so you can see the elastic potential as I spring, as I whoop, and put it right up, and release. Now we'll watch Julie do it. Here she goes, she cleans it, overhead press, and release. Clean it, overhead press, release. We'll go to the side now. See this kind of squat pattern again, and from that clean to press, and one more clean to press. There you go, folks. All right, this is vertical clean to push press. Well, how is that different than the one we just did was a vertical clean to overhead press? Well, the overhead press, I just muscled that guy up there from my rack position. But what if I got really clever and I did a little quarter squat, boom, and I launched it up? And that's what we want to do. That's what a smart monkey would do. It wouldn't just muscle it up. It would use its brains and the elastic potential of the old hip glute area and do a little quarter squat and press it up. So let's see what that looks like. And we're gonna do our vertical clean, which we have done. This is the third exercise we do in vertical clean, huh? How about that? So we do a vertical clean, boom, and like a smart monkey, quarter squat, boom, push press. Release and release. Here we go. Vertical clean, push, press. Okay, I'll do it from the side. Vertical clean, push, press. Got it? Let's watch Julie do it. And she'll be the smart monkey now. So, Julie, let's stand from the standing position first. Why don't we do that? Okay. Okay, now we use the elastic potential of our glutes. Spring potential to get the vertical clean, push, press. Yeah, do another one. So there she has the elastic potential to get the vertical clean, elastic potential again to get the push, press. And now she's a smart monkey getting that thing up with as little force as possible through her arm, but using that huge powerhouse down here to do it. Now let's go to the side, watch that again. Push, press. Oops. Oh, she didn't do her push, press. Right. Bad monkey. Okay, let's clean that up from there. Vertical clean, push, press. There we have it, let's do it one more time. And vertical clean, push, press. Yeah, it's okay to stop there at that vertical clean a little bit, get your sense before you do the push, press. Very good. So this is box squat hip hinge. Why do we call it that? Well, I'm going to pretend there's a big box back here. You know those big 4.5 cubic foot moving boxes. If you ever moved, you've seen these big boxes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pretend like I'm sitting back on the box. This also looks like something you might do at a gas station with a dirty gas station seat. Okay, so we notice that the shin is kind of almost vertical here as my hip goes back and I have this hip hinge. This is different than a squat where my shins form a parallel to my back and I feel more weight probably in the front part of my foot but now with a hip hinge, I feel the weight a little more in my heel. 
So what I'm going to do then is I come on up with my clacker arms, like a clacker bell, and we're just going to have the elbow go no further than the outside of the bat cave. This is our bat cave. My elbow stays on the outside of the bat cave no further in than that as I thrust my hips forward and I have my clacker arms. So we'll watch Julie do it. Sideways? Yeah, maybe sideways. And pretend like we're swinging that kettlebell in. So as we can see, her shin is staying a little, a little forward, but not too bad. But the hip is going back. And as that hip thrust out, that's where your power comes from. Think about all you linemen or women in football that use that hip power to thrust out. And it's a basic um, lifting pattern that we're going to see with Olympic bars and a bunch of other stuff later in the program. So now we're going to learn a two-arm Russian swing. Wow, all these exercises, and we haven't even swung a kettlebell yet. Isn't that amazing? Well, we're finally doing it. So let's congratulate ourselves here. So how do we do this? I'm going to start out in like a hiked football position. Notice the kettlebell is leaning towards me. And I'm just when I lift it, it's going to swing between my legs. Boom! And the kettlebell is flying up towards you. Don't worry, I'm holding on to it. And it's going up to about my nose, mouth level. That's all we need to go. And my arms are swinging like just clackers in a bell. They're doing no work. My hip is doing all the work. Swing, swing, drop. Don't stop the momentum of the kettlebell. Let it swing, swing, and drop. I'm going to demonstrate from the side. Again, I'm going to hike my football. And then, boom! It's swing, swing, plop. That's how we stop it. Now we're going to watch Julie do it. So first she'll do it towards camera again, just to reinforce. She starts from a height football position. As she lifts it, it's going to swing in. Again, remember, the elbows stay outside of the thighs. Her eye gaze is pretty much across the room, or maybe down a little bit, but about 10, 15 feet away. As she uses that hip power to thrust out, and it raises the kettlebell with beautiful biomechanical efficiency. So maybe the side now, Julie. You may not want to be in line with that kettlebell when she swings it. Probably smart. Kind of Darwinian. There we go. And she's going to let it flop, flop, flop. Okay. And uh, that's all I can say about that. I need a better ending transition on these things. All right, folks, this is the uh, one arm swing. Uh, we did a two-arm swing. This is one arm. Uh, the big difference is that the body can now kind of move to accommodate the kettlebell going into the back cave here. And I'm going to turn my thumb one quarter. If I, if I grip the kettlebell like this, I'm going to turn it so my thumb goes in the back cave first. Why? Uh, it kind of stretches um, the tricep muscle here and it adds to the elastic potential of the swing. Again, kettlebell, we want to get it up as efficiently as possible and not use too much energy. There's two ways to swing a kettlebell, one with a lot of energy and then one efficiently that reduces the amount of energy. That's a smarter way to go and that's what we're gonna do. All right, so I'm gonna demonstrate. So the kettlebell starts in the hiked position, just like before, and then when I pick it up and swing, my thumb does a quarter turn in, and boom, 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 boom. Let it swing, let it swing, and plop. I'll demonstrate from the side. Start from the height football position. Make sure your eye gaze is out, locked in that lower back. 
pick it up, quarter turn in, and one, two, I'll just do four, three, four, let it swing, let it swing, plop. All right. All right, now this is the lawnmower lap pull. You ever start a lawnmower? Kind of pull that cord? Well, that's, that's the feel we want, and we'll explain why we need that feel. Um, so the feel that Julie's going to have from that is if she pulls the lawnmower, she's pulling from the trap in the upper part of her shoulder here, and that activates those muscles, and uh, let's turn this way, okay, from the side, and again, I'm just gonna, so the kettlebell's coming out of her bat cave. It's swinging, but she needs to change the momentum of the kettlebell from horizontal to vertical, and you do it by pulling with the lat, the upper part of the shoulder and the lat, and it pulls that kettlebell, right? And it changes the momentum from horizontal to vertical because when we swing it, we have to change the momentum and have it go vertical. All right? That's all I can say about that. So this is the swing power clean. We've uh, done a vertical clean, remember that? Where we kind of picked it up from a squat position and we got it to the rack position very efficiently. But now we want to swing it and use the momentum of the kettlebell to go vertical. So instead of just muscling this thing up, I can actually use the power of my hip hinge and have it swing up to the rack position. So I'll demonstrate. Again, everything's the same. It's the one arm swing, but we're going to put in that lawnmower lat pull. And so when it comes out of the bat cave, boom, it flicks right up to the rack position. I'm going to release it from here and go right into my next swing. Boom. And you can see it's a very efficient way using my hip power to get the kettlebell up. I'm really not using any arm at all, except just to hold on to the thing. All right? So that's the basics. Uh, let me just demonstrate from the side. Again, the high football position. That quarter turn in and it goes right up the chimney. Oh, we're going to have Julie stand right in front of me. Mm, Dangerous, point. right? I should not hit her with the kettlebell. So, okay, I hope you sign the waiver. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to start from the height football position, and here I go, I'm going to go on in, and boom, it goes right up, right up the chimney, and that's why we learned that lawnmower pull, because it goes right up the chimney to the rack position. Two-hand goblet squat to press. So a goblet is a big glass that you drink wine out of or something. I don't know. Um, but we're just going to hold it like a big glass with both hands. With the horns, the handle kind of away from us. They don't get in the way. And the kettlebell is going to be at our chest. And we're using a heavier kettlebell here, if you can handle it. It'll make you out of breath and huffy. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to squat down so my elbows touch the top of my thighs. And the weight's kind of in my heel midfoot, so I can tap my toes maybe. And then I'm just going to press it right overhead, just clearing my head. That's all you got to do. And then go right on down, squat, and I launch it right overhead again. And what I don't need to do is launch it so my arms are straight because my shoulders feel kind of bound up and it feels goofy with my lat muscle pulling my sacrum out. So I'm just going to clear my head. That's it. Okay? So let's watch uh, Julie do it. And she's holding it like a goblet, close to her chest, elbows touch, launch overhead. And she can get a nice kind of rhythm here. She can get some speed up, some power. Uh, it makes a great metabolic interval if you want to do a metabolic interval. And since all the routines have a cardio component and strength components, here you go. So from the side, we're going to watch her do it. Again, her weight's probably in the heel and midfoot as she launches it overhead. 
and you just pound them out. So Ooh. it looks good. All right? It's good. And it should make you a little out of breath. <laughs> All right, this is uh, bottoms up. Uh, short arm L to press. Three different things, a lot of stuff going on. So what do we mean by bottoms up? Well, that's bottoms down. That is bottoms up. Since the center of mass is above your wrist, that's kind of hard to stabilize. Ha! But that's what we're doing. We want to stabilize the wrist strength, the shoulder strength, and that's what a bottom um, bottoms up, I didn't speak that very well, that's what bottoms up does for us, all right? It's not a drinking game, it's a kettlebell game. But it could help with your drinking game. But it could help, or burn it off afterwards, oh. all right? So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of swing it, hold it, stabilize bottom up. Notice I'm using a lighter kettlebell. Trust me, you will want to use a lighter kettlebell, especially when you start, until you develop that wrist strength and shoulder dynamic stabilization strength. All right, so that's what I do. And now I'm gonna to go to an L position, I'll show you from the side, is that I swing it and then I lock it out at that L position away from my body. And that puts a bigger load on that shoulder joint. And this has got to work for it. That you might see that shake a little bit as I'm working to stabilize it. And then what's the third step? I then just press it back to the L, let it swing, let it swing, stabilize, press it back to my L, and let it swing. Got it? Now let's watch Julie do it. And she's using a lighter kettlebell here. Want me to turn to the side or? Uh, do it. Front. Front first. So short arm, and we just want to have her hold it and peg it there a little bit. Kind of like a gymnast sticking the landing, kind of nice. All right, we got that, and then she goes to an L, away from her body, an L away from her body, now she goes to an L to a press, Whoop. back to an L, swing it, back to an L, back to a press, and let's watch that whole thing from the side now, so she's gonna face, she switch hands. Showing that she has strength in each shoulder, each arm. Again, that short arm, bottoms up. All right, and then to an L. Swings to an L, stabilizes it out there, pegs it. And then now we're just going to go to an L, and she's going to press it back to an L, let it swing. L, press, L, and you got it. Do that for each shoulder, and your shoulders are going to get nice and strong. We've got them warmed up, and now they're really strong now. That's a good one. Okay.